Yes. Yes, that's the energy we're going for. <laughs> Welcome to me. I'm Fireside. <laughs> Yay! So welcome to my channel. My name is Margaret Pinard, and you are here for a fireside chat. We'll get to the fireside bit in a moment, but the purpose of this series is to welcome a new creative guest every twice a month. And today we have Lara Elena Donnelly. So welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited about this. I was saying before we got started, I haven't done like an author event in in a little while so this is very fun for me nice yes and you know like there's the publicity there's the tour there's the promotion but then there's like the in between and you know yeah. every once in a while it's nice to have like a little pop of yes we appreciate your work you're wonderful without you know a new book <laughs> Yeah, also when you're doing book launch stuff, it's like everyone has the same five questions and you do like 10 interviews in a row where you're like, oh, yep, okay, we're talking about this again. It's like, did someone send out a list? And they're like, these are the pre-approved questions for you to ask about yeah. this author's book. So it's kind of nice to be like, we're doing this not for any book in particular. We're just doing this for fun and to talk about writing. Yeah. So like the little intro said, charge your creative batteries and just have a little fun, get to know a new creator and get some inspiration. So while it's not about a book, I will pimp the book or shill the book is probably the more correct term. Um, Ember, there are pimps in that book. So I feel like... <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so the gorgeous cover. Yes, we could admire, admire. And my special claim and the reason why I'm I've connected with Lara, Lara today is we read this book for the Patreon book club and we all loved it, which I don't think had happened before in over a year. And so I was like, I found the grail. <laughs> a unanimous <laughs> approval from the book club. Yeah. That's like, yeah, that is definitely, that's the goal. Okay. That was good. So uh, let me just say hello to the chat here. Hey, hey, hello, Eva and Jennifer Brown. Lovely to see you. And Anita, yay, all the lovely people. Leslie is here. Says happy Friday. Yes, I have gotten the day wrong this week three times. Thankfully, it is Friday. <laughs> oh my God, I couldn't believe it. Couldn't wait. And Cool Gamer, hello, hello. So like the other Fireside Chats, the series that continues twice a month is also going to involve a little bit of question and answer, a little bit of creative exercise. And so I give the guest a choice of like, what kind of creative exercise would you like to do? And Lara, what did you choose? I chose flash fiction. I also want to stop here and say, Jennifer, yes, they are fish skeletons. They are by an artist named Jeremy. That's with an O, Jeremy Velasco, who I saw at FlameCon a couple of years ago, right after he sold the last pair of these earrings. And I was like, I must have them. So I had to order them from his website. Um, but he's got a bunch of really cool earrings. If you want enormous laser cut plastic dead things to hang from your ears. <laughs> Anyway, yes, I chose flash fiction because right. I was like, heck yeah, let's generate some new exciting material. Oh, wow, that was fast. That's, that's my little yeah. elves that work behind the scenes. Yes. Um, so that's in the chat if you love the, the jewelry choices. But yeah, so get your flash fiction ready if you want to go right along with us. We'll be doing two rounds. We each brought a prompt, so we'll get a little bit more time than some of the other guests have had. <laughs> so... Um, but I also had a few like starter lead in questions. When we talk about the Amber Lou dossier series, which is complete at three novels, right? Three. Yeah. It's a trilogy. And it usually gets glam spy queer thriller as like it's headliner. Right. And I understand all of those terms, but the one that perplexes me is glam when I really think about it. So what is glam mean to you and how does it apply in this book couldn't put oh, exactly this is so interesting because when you said it and you were like how does glam apply my first thought was like actually yeah <laughs> like it's not glam in the sense of like velvet gold mine glam rock like yeah you're not talking like 70s 80s like ziggy stardust situation my uh, preference. I <laughs> Maybe I should write that novel. This novel is not that novel. Um, I do love Velvet Goldmine. I love that movie. Um, but 
I think what that means in this context is much more like glamour, like old Hollywood, 1930s, oh, like okay. studio cinema drama, you know, like yes. everyone is wearing like feather boas and fur coats and everyone is very dramatic. Um, so I think when we say glam, we mean glamorous in, in like a black and white film sense. Yes. Glamour with the OU, like the Yes, U. glamour with an OU. <laughs> Continental <laughs> glamour. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because actually you could go glamour with like the the elf fantasy. Oh version. yeah. Oh not just- that glamour either. <laughs> We're not talking about like enchantment glamour either. Just pure, pure star power. Okay. Well we've got we've got readers and writers in the audience who have read and written about elf glamour all the way to you know, cinematic glamour. So people people like all the different things. Um, I'm excited, yes, about this. Laser cut, plastic dead things, sold. <laughs> There's a pair that I almost got that are translucent neon green with like a purple sheen on them as if they died because they were in like a toxic waste toxic. dump. <laughs> and they're like a little bit drippier looking. Um, oh. But I thought classics first and then we can expand on that. There you go, there you go. Set the tone, establish the brand. I like it. Um, I also noticed on your website, which I'll pop in the, in the chat, you have a tagline of author, poet, fabulous, and fabulous isn't a title that I come across that often. So I was wondering how you toggle between those roles or how you choose which ideas to go into which media. I thought that was really neat. So I haven't written poetry for a long time. I don't mm-hmm. think I've written any poetry for years, but I have poet on my website because I have links to a couple poems that I had published. And I was like, well, if they're on there, I can call myself a poet. <laughs> um, yes. Fabulous. I put on there, I think, because I, I feel sort of conflicted about the way a lot of people talk about genre elements. Um, Ooh, okay. Yes. This is a later question as well. So, Oh, Oh, I don't want to jump the gun, but um, <laughs> I feel like people who are writing from within the literary establishment, I feel like I have seen reviewers and or tastemakers talk about them as like writing fabulism instead of fantasy. And mm. I was like, well, uh, I would like to be considered a fabulous as well. Um, and like the latest novel that I had come out last February, I'm, I'm like, time, what happened? I just read a brief article today in New York Magazine about how the pandemic has completely warped everyone's sense of time and what it means. Uh, so I think titled what is time anymore? Because that's yes, everyone yes. says on their Zoom call. It was like all these women in their early 30s are surprised about how old they are. And I was like, oh, that's God. me. I'm like, when did I turn 33? I don't understand. I'm still 30. Like the last three years didn't happen. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, yeah. So my last book came out last February, February 2022. Um, and for me, like writing it, I was pretty sure like this is a book that is definitely not fantasy, could potentially be horror, might have a little bit of magic in it, but we're not sure. It's Ooh. definitely a thriller. I don't know. It felt very like what even is is genre. Yeah. Um, and I, I the Amberlo dossier is fantasy, but there's no magic in it. It's only fantasy by dint of taking place in a world that I totally made up, but also largely based on real places <laughs> so it's like I I am always being very what is genre what genre am I even in mm. um so fabulous felt like a better title than like fantasy author mm. um I I was like well I just make things up and even if I was making things up that didn't have magic or monsters or whatever like the very act of creating fiction is a fabulous exercise right you're just like making up a totally new thing a thing which doesn't exist yeah which is the magic so where would you okay fantasy fabulism magical realism I feel like magical realism has like had its day in the sun and people are like putting it in a drawer and now taking out fabulism and going it's a new thing (laughs) I feel like fabulism arose because people were like actually we cannot call things magical realism unless they exist in the tradition of Latin American magical realism yeah um but if you're writing something that's like 
it's weird <laughs> it's like you do. yay yeah like if you're writing something where, where people don't know what to call it but they don't want to call it fantasy for either literary establishment reasons or because it's like not quite fantasy you know where it's just like right, right. weird stuff happened that isn't really something that would happen in real life but who knows uh, but we're not going to call it magical realism because it doesn't exist in that tradition. So we need a word to call it uh, that doesn't lump it in with like Lord of the Rings or whatever. So I think that's where we got fabulism. Cool. Cool. All right. Well, fabulous or not, it's definitely fabulous. So, you know, if you haven't read it, join the train, come back and discuss. Oh, and this is where I'm Would going. You? Yeah, this is where I'm going to put a link to my review in case you are curious and want to listen to me gush about it. I talked about how our book club loved it. And that was last December because we were doing like mysteries in December. Um, I've also got a poll up on my community tab for the Gothic read for October. So far, the Night Circus is winning. Any thoughts? I actually haven't I have read, read it. it. <laughs> I haven't read it. <laughs> I started reading it when I first moved to New York. I had a copy of it that someone had lent me and recommended it. And I read like the first couple like the first chapter, I think, on the subway as I was looking for apartments, but it got uh, put aside in favor of Patrick Suskin's perfume, The Story of a Murderer. Oh, so like, okay. That's clearly the mindset <laughs> that I was in while I was like in the depths of New York real estate. I was like, what about, instead of the night circus, the story about a crazy man who murders a bunch of women and turns them into perfume? Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so yeah, so visit that poll if you haven't voted yet, um, and save my little review link here for later. I'm going to go ahead and set up for our first prompt. Do you want to do mine or do you want to do yours first? I have, I have no strong opinion about this. We okay. can flip a coin. Ooh, do I have a coin? I do. Yeah, I said that. And then I was like, I sure don't even have one. I oh, have I have one. here. I have this big wooden thing. Okay. This is this entitles me to one one free tapa at oh. a, a tapas restaurant in a suburb of Boston that I am sure is closed by now. Oh. I've had this since the year 2018. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I have um million lira notes from 20 2006. So there nice. you go. <laughs> I was like, nice. oh, my little old money base. Okay, uh, uh, what should we, call, should we call this tails, and um, that can be heads? Sure. Okay. Let's see how good you are at flipping coins. Oh, wait, hang on. If you win the coin toss, does that mean that you go first or a second? Uh, you go first. Okay. And you said heads? I said heads. Ooh. <laughs> it's, <laughs> tails. it's tails. It's tails. Okay. Excellent. So you will go first. Get your notebooks ready, everybody. We're going to get our fireplace. Oh, the fire! The titular fire. Yes. <laughs> Fireside chat. Um, All right, everybody. Yeah. Let me get the timer ready because that's the other thing is like you want a little nudge as to how much time we have. So we'll set it for 10 minutes. So we have some time to discuss. Uh, 25. Oh, yeah. Everybody who is uh, viewing us now in the green room beforehand, I was saying that my cat had a tooth extraction today. So she's really loopy and is like wandering around. Uh, so if you see me dealing with that, that's why. OK, my prompt, my prompt. Um, yeah. So my prompt is I want you to think of and when I say the word most, don't freak out about literally choosing the thing that is the most. Just okay. pick the one that feels like it comes up for you. I want you to pick uh, the most interesting person that you have ever met, the most beautiful place that you have ever been, and the hardest words that you have ever had to say. And I want you to take those three things and see, like, you have a setting, you have a character, and you have these words which I think imply a conflict. And I would like to see what you come up with with those three things. Oh my God. Okay. So say again, the most interesting, most interesting person you've ever met. Okay. The most beautiful place you have ever been. Okay. 
and the hardest words that you have ever had to say. Okay. Uh, I'm going to change the time because I have to write this in for people. Most interesting person met. Most beautiful place seen. Hardest thing had to say. Also, I see Eva asking, do we also do Flash in the audience? Yes, as if you would like, for sure. <clears throat> but I know that people will say, what's the prompt? What's the prompt while we're trying to write? And so that's why I was trying to put it in here. So there we go. Ooh, look at that. I feel <laughs> like I'm on CNN. Yeah, there you go. Much better than a stock broker, stock ticker. It's the prompt and the timer. Um, I'm going to give us an extra minute. Okay. Bingo. We'll start a fire. Good? Yeah. So go, 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 go. And I'll mute myself so that you can hear the fire and not any weird noises I make while writing. Ooh. Can I? I can.
And we're at 26 already. Did that go by fast? What is time? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, wow, this is not even, what I have written is not even a story. <laughs> I Less than a page. It took a while to get those, like, things in place. So that was a hard one. Out the gate with a really hard one. What did I say? I said, frick. <laughs> it so, is a hard one. Yeah. I hope I hope I got I wasn't sure like what you're getting at with the conflict so we'll go over it in a second yeah um, admittedly this is one that I tend to use when I have like a longer class and can kind of talk about like what makes a story mm -hmm. um but I feel like those three things like if you have the hardest words you've ever said I feel like that brings up a lot of things for you the writer but also sort of intimates like there's somebody in a space and either they're saying something to someone or someone is saying something to them. And so I like to think that with these three elements, you can kind of come up with mm. something happening to okay. someone somewhere. Okay. <laughs> so Jessiva is typing hers up. Um, mind if I go first? Yeah, go ahead. Wait, are we reading this aloud? Yeah. Oh, you, don't no. <laughs> you don't want to. But if you yeah, want no, to I can't. Or... I can't. Yeah. You should go first, though, because I've got to look at mine and be like, does this even make sense? <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So uh, most interesting person, most beautiful place, hardest thing said to someone. So I, I definitely like mm, fudged. The long body of the swimmer broke the surface of the lock. It was September and the Atlantic was at its warmest. But this was a lock. And the fall sun had trouble making any inroads at its depth. The swimmer stalked across the pebbled shore, showing no sign of cold or pain or inadequacy in any form. She got to the low wall leading to the road where her towel and shoes lay. When she had them on, she leaned her head back to scoop the top of her long hair back into a bun. What do you need, Fincastle? She said, her elbows, knives stabbing the air. The small man took a hesitant step closer from where he stood on the road above her. The creditors, ma'am, they're asking for you again, first of the month and all. I'm done with giving excuses, she said. Tell them there's no hope. I'll die before they get paid. There we go. <laughs> That's a gross scene. Very little of the like actual story, but. Yeah, I got my, my three things in there. So, yay. Nice. Oh, oh it was I like it. I listen while typing. Sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, well, I think this is recorded, right? So you can come back and listen to it later. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And yeah. It's recorded for posterity. Yes, if you'd like to type it into the chat, that would work. Or you can send it to me on Instagram to read. Either way. I'll open that up just to give that room in case you want to do it all at once. Um, okay. If you're ready. I am. So I, the caveat, I have two caveats actually. <laughs> One is that I was like, oh, I can use this. I know that like we could have worked on our works in progress. That was one of the options. And I was like, no, I'll do an original flash fiction. But then I was like, ooh, or I could use this as an excuse to like workshop a new version of a scene from my <laughs> work in progress. So this is like a cheat. I cheated. Uh, and also, I didn't manage to connect the first part, which is the interesting person and the beautiful place, with the third part, which is the hardest words that I've ever said. Uh, okay. So there's an ellipsis here. And when I get to the ellipsis, I'll indicate somehow. <laughs> and then okay. we'll get to the next bit. Um, We're fans of the ellipsis and the M dash on this channel. Full I love an M dash. Full stand. Yes. Love an M dash. Okay. Uh, right. The sun on the lawn of Philip Johnson's glass house turned up the saturation like the swipe of an Instagram filter slide. Grass green as astroturf, blinding white bricks at a pebble path seared into the ground, a perfect circle of cerulean swimming pool. Sophie squinted even behind her sunglasses, felt sweat gathering beneath the underwire of her bra. 
Briard stood in the center of the lawn, between the solid square of the brick house and the mysterious gray shadows where the translucent walls of the glass house overlapped. He took a silk handkerchief from the pocket of his jacket and touched it to his forehead. Sophie didn't see any sweat on him. We'll set up catering here, said the guide, gesturing to the gravel path and a dance floor on the lawn. Your guests will have access to the glass house, although we do ask that they leave food and beverages outside and please observe all the daytime rules of the space. No use of the furniture, etc. This is all in the contract, Sophie asked. The guide nodded. What about the pool? Asked Briard. The guide shook her head. No swimming. That's a liability issue for us. Besides, it can be cold here even at the end of May. Briard nodded. And the brick house? Off limits, I'm afraid. Undergoing renovations. Without the windows, we get a terrible problem with mildew. And here we have an ellipsis. <laughs> um, some things happen. I think Briard and Sophie have a little tete-a-tete. -tete. Uh, he says, you wouldn't let, want to let me down, he said. Would you? No, she said. Not because it was what she wanted to say, but because she didn't think he would let her, even if she wanted to try. Hmm. Let her let him down. Ugh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that feels like a lot. I love this setting. I love the details. I was like putting them into place as you put every new color in there. Like, oh. Man, if you're ever in Connecticut, Philip Johnson's glass house is like really surreal. It's a very strange place to visit. Huh. There's also a secret passageway, and they told us this uh, on the tour. There is, so the, the idea is there's the glass house and the brick house, and they have a lawn between them, but his conception of it architecturally is that they're actually the same house and the lawn is a room. Um, but between the glass house, which is all made of glass, and the brick house, which is all made of brick and has like one window that you can't even really see from the outside, there's a secret passage in the bathroom of the glass house, which is the only part of it that's like walled in that you can't see from oh. the outside. Okay. Um, in the floor, there's apparently like a part of the floor you can open up, go down a ladder, and then go underground all the way to the brick house and come up inside. That is cool. So you've got glass, brick, and earth. Yeah. Just all earth-based materials anyway. That's cool. Yeah. It's a really wild place. I highly recommend it if you're interested at all in arts and architecture. Mm. Very cool. Very cool. I, when you say most beautiful place, my mind obviously will go to Scotland where I've set my series and always want to return to. So the Isle of Mo. Thank you. Oh, Mo. Yes. I've never been, but I've heard about it. It sounds amazing. Yeah, it's beautiful. I just put a, a memory actually on Facebook and everyone's commenting on it. I'm like, yeah, that was a long ass time ago. I wish I was there now. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, excellent. Uh, wait, I think we got a comment. I think this is to do with your passage. That's when when it goes back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what yeah. I'm hoping happens at this place is that things go horribly, horribly wrong for all of our characters. So mm. it's whimsical and delightful <laughs> in a very sinister way, hopefully. Nice. nice. Yes. And if anyone in the chat is interested in horror, if you visit Lara's website, uh, Base Notes is, it's got horror in one of its review quotes. So like, it's full of that way, pretty yeah. grisly murder. If you're like, you know what I like? people being murdered. This is the book for you. I know I have audience members like that. <laughs> so, okay. And then Eva has put her flash fiction in. Very exciting. So let's do I'm this. Reading it, yeah. oh, say hello to Nia. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Hello. All right. So the breeze was cool despite the overbearing. I like how we both had swimming in ours, even though there was no communication at all about swimming. <laughs> about swimming. <laughs> okay. The breeze was cool despite the overbearing sun. I peered up to see how far past noon it was when I stumbled. The old man nudged the shotgun into my back. Keep it moving, trash. I continued forward, any remnants of a path long behind us. The thorns of the mountain plants dug into my skin and ankles as I brushed through the thick growth. My legs were heavy. We had been walking since before sunrise. I caught another stone with my foot and fell hard into a patch of rock and dirt. A taste of new blood coating my mouth. 
a steel boot, a steel toed boot met my ribs. My breath went into the dust next to my tooth and I rolled over groaning. Any last words? The gun was aimed at me. The aged fingers on the trigger, years older than when the man behind them took me in. Years older than the last time I saw him. I'm sorry. I had said it all before. He gave a nod, I remembered, and a grunt. Bang. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my gosh. Right. <laughs> oh, that was great. Oh, man. So now we're last with like, okay, so what's the location that's not named? Is this mountain path and like the most interesting person? And like, wow. Okay. So I'm going to be like trying to deconstruct that knowing Eva. <laughs> yeah. So like true grit to me in a way. Like, you know, it's very out west. Harsh, oh, and so she's in a situation. Us- yes. The, the piece- <laughs> you, don't, you don't think he's a killer? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. I love this. Yeah, the deconstructed. Um, I, yeah, I found it hard to like put them together because I couldn't use the person I'd met who I knew as like a character and put words in their mouth. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to envision her and then like make her do something different based on. Yeah, that. yeah. So. My most interesting person is uh, definitely not himself in the book. Um, he's like a version of himself. He's. <laughs> The de- deputy director of UNICEF uh, in real life. Yeah. Um, in the book, he's like the evil, uh, the evil founder of like a multinational digital advertising corporation, um, which is definitely not in something car- I can envision him doing in real life. But a lot of the like mannerisms and the the general vibe I fully stole from my most interesting person. Nice. That's cool. That's a cool exercise. So. If anyone wants to take that and do, um, like, store it away for later, that's a good one. Yeah, I bequeath it to you. You may use it however you want. Uh, so my my question, my mid-break question was about genre. And this is the one that I hope isn't, like, repeating. But, like, who else do you see in your lane slash genre? Because I was trying to figure out, like, I really loved Jenna Rose Nethercott's book, Thistlefoot. And I'm thinking there's magical elements, there's folkloric elements, there's definitely history that comes to revisit us and bite us in the ass. And so there's the same like intention of some of the themes, but definitely not like the mood or the style. But I'm like, but I want to say you're like in the same sort of space, like throwing clay against the walls Mm. together. (laughs) But I'm like, do you see other authors who you would say, oh, like they've got a piece of this that I'm doing and they've got a piece of that that I'm doing? (laughs) We're all just in here throwing clay at the walls. (laughs) Um, It's a big mud wrestling genre that we're all a part of. Oh, as I frantically look around my bookshelves. um, Because, you know, usually people are like, who are your favorite authors? And I'm like, oh, I have very easy answers for that one. But authors that I feel like I'm sort of sharing a genre space with. Like um, been on panels with maybe, or that like you've come across in workshops or I don't know where you would like get lumped in with people who are trying for the same things, either thematically or stylistically. Oh, you know who? Um, um, Kat Weaver and... Emily Bergslane wrote this novella for Neon Hemlock called Uncommon Charm, which I feel like I loved it. I loved it so much. And it's set in like 1920s, 1930s London. Um, and there's magic, but it's very like weird magic. And okay. it's also about like family drama. Like, and it, it's, I love the way that it does its family drama because its family drama is very serious and very, very traumatic. Like members of this family had pretty terrible things happen to them at the hands of other members of the family Hmm. who are still around, but it manages to be like the most charming, frothy, light, sparkling little confection of a novella while you're reading it and being like oh my god some really terrible things yeah. happen to these people it's like it's so satisfying um and I like to think that if someone was making a shelf of like 
traumatic, sparkly, historical <laughs> fantasy or like pseudo oh historical fantasy. Yep. You're Anachroni- Let's call it anachronistic because like mine is not historical, but it is definitely anachronistic because it's like 1920s, 1930s, 1940s levels of like tech, etc. So I like to believe that if someone was going to make a shelf of things, it would be like Swords Point by Ellen Kushner, Uncommon Charm, the Amberlo Dossier, and then like um, Unnatural Magic by C.M. Wagner, uh, which is another sort of like, it's about politics and, and um, unconventional relationships and sexuality and people who've had really traumatic things happen to them. Um, Maybe we could also put in The Goblin Emperor by Catherine Addison. And, oh, I would also really like to be shelved with um, Elizabeth Bear's New Amsterdam, which is out of print, but you can still find it in like, if you go searching for like used books, uh, there's still a lot of copies of it floating around. Nice. Well, I've heard of some of those names and some of them are new to me. So I'll have to like do the catch up and put them in the description afterwards. So look for that. Anyone watching this on the replay, but yeah, sparkly, traumatic, anachronistic thriller. There you go. There's your next tagline. If you continue doing that. Yes. Um, But that's good. Like who would you want to be on a shelf with is a better, maybe a better way to phrase that. Yeah. If you shelve your books, actually, this isn't really how I've shelved my fiction books, but for a long time, my Ooh. nonfiction books were shelved vibes only. <laughs> it was like, these books should all go together based on their content. And then the flow of like one content chunk to another was very like, well, these are all like World War I books, which means that they should go next to, it was like, these are world, these are British Empire history going into World War I, specifically mostly biographies of gay World War I poets and then the biographies of their twinkie boyfriends and then from there to like gay history and from gay history to like the ethical slut and from the ethical slut to like feminist theory nice. from feminist theory to like diaries of a woman homesteader like ah. the, the the transitions were very like I don't know this book feels like it should go next to that book library talk is hot stuff I don't have transitions I have I'm looking at what fits in this amount of space and what fits in this amount of space that I have oh, yeah no that's <laughs> definitely how the fiction books are shelved at this point they were shelved by all novels in order of author and then Bottom shelf was short story collections by editor and then oh poetry. Um, but now <laughs> we have too many books and it's just like wherever the overflow will fit. Um, and also we got a new bookshelf for... Yeah, I should definitely ask all my guests oh, that. About, like like bookshelf, book, bookshelf orders. Oh, we oh. got a new bookshelf for the bedroom and we had to take all the nonfiction off because the nonfiction lives in the bedroom. Uh-huh. And when we put it back on, we organized it by author last name. And it bothers me every time I look at it because I'm like, those books shouldn't go next to each other because the, the <laughs> vibes aren't right. So someday I'll probably take all of the books off and reshelve them for when vibes. You, when you need like a calming project, I find that like the reorganizing the bookshelves is like, no, it works like no other. Like ice cream, yeah. reorganizing bookshelves. Like <laughs> at the same time. At the same time. Yeah. There we go. Oh, I see a new person in the chat. Hello, Felicia. Hi, Felicia. Nice to see you. Um, let's see. So do, 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 do. I tried to put a link in and it gave me a super long link on Bookshop. So instead of that one, go by this one at the moment. <laughs> I am really, I was prepared for that one. Um, uh, did I have an, I did have one more question for the middle, but we're getting down to the last 15 minutes. The, the, okay, so short question. Um, unfuck it on your website. I'm sure that some of our listeners would be intrigued to learn what you do as it looks like as a consulting service. So tell me. This is a consulting service. I yeah. joked about this consulting service for years. I joked about it. <laughs> and then I was like, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. So I launched this consulting service called Unfuck It. Uh, unfuck It is for people who want to write sex scenes and are really intimidated by it or are worried they're going to mess it up 
or have written one and are like, I feel like it could be hotter. Um, I really like writing sex scenes a lot. I have beef with the way that sex scenes are often written. And I would love to work with people who are like, I want to write good sex scenes. Um, And I've helped a couple of people so far, not even through the consulting service, just like friends have asked me to read their sex scenes. Mm -hmm. And I liked doing it so much. And I liked sort of picking them apart and and being like, what is your goal? Because it feels like a collaborative process, right? Mm -hmm. Like sex scenes are not always in there just to be titillating. Like a lot of the time they're doing really good work. Sorry about the sirens. Uh, Doing really good work for the story. Right. Um, So like working with the author to be like, what is your goal for this scene? And what do you want your readers to take away? Mm -hmm. Um, And I also just think like, they're really great moments for getting into who your character is and how they like sex is a very personal thing and if you are putting it in your fiction it's a great opportunity to be like yeah <laughs> hi Sako <laughs> you're sliding into the talk about sex scenes yes. welcome <laughs> anyway, yeah. Um, but yeah if you are out there freaking out about writing sex scenes and you're like I need the help of an expert there are testimonials on there with people being like this is why Lara's great at writing sex scenes. So yeah. please hit me up and we will work together and it will be really fun for both of us. Yes. On the website, far right tab. I definitely like looked at that and was like, oh yes, <laughs> looks really fun. Okay. So are you ready for my prompt? Yes. Okay. So my prompt is since we both have trilogies, think of your trilogy and when it is set. I don't know how what the time span is because I haven't finished it yet. But think of a moment, either 20 years before or 20 years after when your trilogy is set, when something happened that either triggered or was triggered by something in your trilogy. So you can choose the before times and like a scene that made something happen in the books or the after times and like a result of whatever, of some action or decision in the books. Is that clear? Okay, so that's yeah, gonna be- I'm like, oh no. <laughs> so that's gonna be hard for people in the chat. So um, maybe in your 10 minutes in the chat, if you wanna do a flash fiction along, think of a moment where you do a scene and then 20 years later, a scene and how they're related. Like show us with an ellipsis, like the thread and that, you know, that could be interesting too. So I'll pop that in. Um, as I wrote it out, so I don't have to think about it again. <laughs> okay, and let's see, I'll fix my timer and get my, are you okay going a few minutes over? Yeah. Okay, so 49, 59. After this, we're just gonna watch an episode of Taskmaster, so I'm, <laughs> whoa! Okay, everyone here should go on YouTube and look up Taskmaster after this, because it is the funniest television show that's ever been aired, I think. It's like a British light comedy game show. Okay. Do yourself a favor. All right. All right. I like it. Here we go. So yeah, I'll go. I'll mute myself and we have uh, 10 minutes for the prompt in the chat about 20 years difference and the thread of like action or connection. Go.
I realized I forgot to mute myself. I didn't hear anything. I think the fire crackles took care of you. I don't think there were any sounds. <laughs> All right. Well, we're close enough if you want to finish up. And check this out. We've got a, a short entry from Sako in the chat. That's very fun. Um, but for anyone who missed it, the prompt was, since we both have trilogies, take a moment either 20 years before that triggered something in the series or 20 years after that was triggered by something in the series and like create the, the link to what you describe in the story, which I thought was fun. Um, hopefully it worked. We'll see. <laughs> um, and if you've got questions for us, I forgot to pop this in. Definitely pop them in the chat. We'll have a few minutes to cover after we share out our stories. Um, there we go. And would you like to go first? Would you like me to read Sako's? Oh, read Sako's first. All right. So question one. I think, I think this is answering the prompt. So Drago Giovanni sat on his favorite chair, a dark Victorian number with velvet plush, smoking his favorite cigarette in his favorite room. The room was a 70s hotel room, complete with peeling floral wallpaper. The double doors opened, revealing three young Japanese men with guns in their hands. Drago smirked. <laughs> I love it. I love I it. I love this name, Drago Giovanni. Yes. Incredible. Yeah. I think, um, Saka, if you want to put a link to what, yeah, you are wrenched. So if you want to put a link to the story world that that lives in, please do put it in the chat. Um, okay. Should I go? All right. So I chose before, which uh, sets me in about 1802. Uh, are you worried about French ships out here then, Da? Asked Sheila as she spun yarn in front of their croft. Her father faced the sea, a grim set to his mouth. French, pa, they'd no dare show sail this close. They did for the 98, said her brother, the contrarian. Aye, but there the interests were united. Who do they have as allies now, here? T'would not be boldness, but lunacy. They'll stay away south. Don't you fret, Sheila. Your man will be back from his fishing yet. The French don't follow the herring, do they, Da? No. Now quit your worrying. Sheila wasn't sure he'd know about the French and herring, but her intended was away fishing, and all she could think of was his not coming back. Morning, Mr. McDonald. Jamie, Miss McDonald. Sheila flicked her eyes up at Gordon Brown, but a moment in acknowledgement. He pursed his lips and continued his way up the road to the north. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I have a bad feeling about, about the young man. <laughs> he comes back, but he does eventually disappear. So, yeah. Oh, no. Yay. Ooh, okay. I see pirate things happening in the chat. Oh, okay. Yay. So Anita, Anita says, wrote a prequel scene to my trilogy. Not sure if it's exactly 20 years, but close. Okay. Black Axe Morgan stood on deck and watched the plundered merchant ships burn, a feeling of satisfaction warming his gut. Spattered blood dried on his face, and he smelled the faint scent of copper mix into the aroma of his beloved sea. The clink of gold echoed across his ship as his men hauled treasure below decks, and he nearly laughed with the joy of it. Rum all around, boys. There's death on the wind and money in the hold. He smiled. Nothing he liked better than a good day of pirating. His first mate handed him a rum. Black Axe Morgan raised a toast as one of the ships he pillaged sank into the ocean. That's a good yeah. sunset. Yeah, praise. <laughs> Anita, are you as excited as I am for the next season of Our Flag Means Death? <laughs> it's so close. <laughs> I don't know. Do they have that? In, do they play that in Canada? <sighs> Anita is in Atlantic Seaboard, Canada. So I don't know if like the show is. you a VPN. You know? Right. right. <laughs> yes. Yes, for sure. 
That's awesome. Thank you, Sacco and Anita and Eva for like putting those in the chat. That was really fun. Okay. Lara. Okay. Yeah. So mine takes place 20 years after the end of the trilogy. Um, so buckle your seat belts. Um, I don't know if it will make sense at all to anyone, <laughs> okay. uh, but it made sense to me and I found it satisfying. Nice. Stephen DePaul's appointment was for half three, but he arrived characteristically late, out of breath, his tie crooked and his hair a mess. His bicycle chain had left a black smear on the inside of his right trouser leg. Mr. DePaul, said the secretary, Miss Chisholm has just stepped out for a moment, if you'll take a seat. His knee jiggled insistently, even when he put his hands over it to keep it still. The clock on the wall opposite the secretary's desk ticked loudly. He watched the second hand make one, two revolutions. Then the door to the corridor swept open, and Regina Chisholm, section chief, swept along with it. She was shorter than Stephen, plumper and paler and neat as a pin. He stood straight and tried not to feel gangly or shabby or out of place. He failed. Mr. DePaul, she said, it's an honor and a privilege. How is your mother these days? The obligate question. They always wanted to know. Fine, thank you. And your uncle? He blinked in surprise. The DePauls are your family, said Chisholm, but they were the services family first. We like to keep tabs on our family. Her voice and smile were as mild as young cheese. And of course, we have the means to do so. <laughs> That's good. I love it. Yay. Yeah. So. so the doomed sort of DePaul legacy of getting involved in things you really shouldn't. <laughs> Over your head. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. The whole family is just like charging in unprepared and getting in over their heads it's a familiar feeling <laughs> that's usually what happens in my nightmares <laughs> relatable people are like i want a relatable character well yeah. i think everyone can relate to being like oh i bit off more than i can chew exactly exactly yeah well i'm glad you said that that felt satisfying because you know when you have exercises or games or flash fiction i think the the push is like oh i can repurpose this to submit or i can try querying this idea or like uh do the thing that's gonna like result in some sort of measurable quantifiable gain and you're like no i think just having fun is is necessary and good so hopefully yes, definitely yes. yeah and hopefully for you at home have had fun joining in, meeting perhaps a new author, and definitely go check out Lara's work and laugh and cry along with the rest of us who have read Amber Lou Dossier. I still have the second and third book to read, but I'm a slow series consumer, so I like to like draw out the pleasure and pain, which is you know, just how I work. Um, like me, who's just like, oh, <laughs> Exactly. Different types of writers, two camps in the world. Um, where can we find you or what are you doing in the near future that you'd love to bring attention to for people? Oh, you can find me if you're in New York. Uh, <laughs> like message me on Instagram. Be like, I'm in New York. Um, I'm not going to be on tour or doing any book events because I don't have anything coming out uh, in the near future. I, ha I just had the German translation of Amber Lowe come out. So I would love it if someone in Germany was like, come do an event with us. So if you know anybody, let them know. Um, but other than that, I'm sort of working on some projects. But mostly what I'm doing right now is that I am on bed rest from writing because mm -hmm. my mental health needed a break. Uh, I've been talking with some writer friends about this and we kind of landed on like writers are basically high performance athletes, but like mentally we're like mental olympians and you can really sprain your little brain ligaments if you push too hard and i don't think that you help yourself if you push too hard and you have a brain injury uh, like a psychic injury yeah. um so i'm trying to rest my little psychic injury um and and hopefully come back more focused on the fact that writing is fun and and better able to just like enjoy myself while doing it instead of totally freaking out and stressing about it because when you become an author you're basically taking a hobby that you've enjoyed and had fun with 
and turning it into this really high pressure, high stress, money earning, pretty fraught situation with like hard deadlines and input from a lot of people. And it's like, I have to remember why it's fun. And these writing exercises have helped me remember why it's fun. I was writing the second one being like, there's like no point to this. It's not going to become something that I'm publishing. It's yeah. just something I know about this character and I'm like excited to make up what's happening to him right now. Yeah. Ugh. Excellent. Excellent. So um, thank you so much for coming on the show, Lara. I very much enjoyed meeting you, getting to talk with you tonight. Um, I've got links for her sites in the description, in the live chat all the things uh i will be having another fireside chat again twice a month and we'll you'll see that out on youtube and on x if we're calling it that but anyway out on the platforms and yeah hopefully you can charge your creative batteries relax have a little break have a little breather meet some new creators and have fun feel good about life yay you're allowed to right <laughs> yeah in fact you should a dear friend said this uh when i was teaching at the alpha workshop for young writers we like to give little pieces of advice to our young writers and one of my dear friends and fellow staffers said to all of the students and the staff I stole this advice she said you deserve to feel happy at least a little bit every day yeah that's a good check-in that's a good check -in. Yeah. so Friday everyone use that as your your mantra for the weekend enjoy it all right well thank you and Thanks to everyone watching and we'll see you again soon. Bye. Take care. Bye.